Well, it was a big weekend in East Tennessee. Obviously, I'm referring to Michelle Kahn playing Sergei Rachmanov's Piano Concerto Number no. 2 at the Tennessee Theater yesterday. There was a football game as well. Now, there is a connection here, for real. I <clears throat> want to tie it together. If you talk to a great piano teacher, or if you talk to a great football coach long enough, at some point in time, they are going to reference this word. Much to the chagrin of people on talk radio or fans, process is an extraordinarily important aspect of being a very skilled musician or a very skilled athlete or a skilled physician, a doctor, teacher, or whatever it may be. A musician who can skillfully play does not transform into a skilled musician overnight. A gifted athlete doesn't master their craft and their sport and compete at the highest level in just a week or two. I recently uh, read that Yo-Yo Ma, the renowned cellist, uh, graduate of Harvard and Juilliard, who was a famous child prodigy and began to publicly perform at age four, that to this day in his 60s as the world's most celebrated cellist, that he practices three to six hours every day still. He's the best on planet Earth at this incredible skill, and he continues to practice. Now, for several weeks, we've been talking about spiritual formation. And here's what we've said. Spiritual formation is the process of being transformed into the image of Jesus Christ for the glory of God and the good of others. Now, when I hear most people talk about transformation, the way it is most often talked about, particularly in kind of the spiritual Christian context, is in the dramatic, sensational, miraculous, transformational sense. Uh, Paul, on the road to Damascus, a bright light shines and Boom, he is converted from a persecutor into a missionary, which wasn't actually true. It's probably about three or eight years, but it's kind of how we think about it. Or we think about the drug dealer who was an addict on the street who encounters the gospel and is not only healed and rescued from his addiction to drugs, but then becomes a hope dealer and begins to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Or we think about jailhouse conversions, or we think about the person who was just so addicted to this or, or, or given to this, and man, they had this incredible encounter with Jesus, and it transformed them. And I want to say this morning that those types of miraculous encounters absolutely do take place. Uh, a couple of times in my life, I have had significant encounters with Jesus where the Spirit of God did something miraculous in me that changed me, that forever altered who I was. And it didn't take six months. It didn't take a year. It took a moment of the Spirit to touch me and change me. But in reality, that has been an occasional. That has been a time or two or three. More often than not, transformation is a process. Over time, in the way a river rock is smoothed by running water is the way usually the Spirit of God works with our practices of discipleship to form us into the image of Jesus Christ. So as we talk about spiritual formation, and as we talk about transformational teaching, that is teaching that both engages the mind and the heart and calls us to, as Kale mentioned, do more than just give assent and belief, but to obey, where faith and obedience come together. That's the vision of Jesus in discipleship. As we teach that way and then as we receive it that way, right? We're, we're not just hearers of the word, we're doers of the word only. Like as we apply the teaching of the scripture into our life and as we engage in practices of discipleship, word, uh, prayer, solitude, we practice Sabbath, we fast, we do other practices of discipleship, we engage in community together as we talked about, and then in the next couple weeks as we talk about the way gospel-fueled ministry and mission grows our faith and the way God in his providential circumstances intersects, these things grow our faith over time, the way a river shapes a rock. So this isn't a series about a quick fix spiritual strategy to give you your best life 
now. There is no such thing as your best life now. There is your best life someday when Jesus reconciles all things to himself, new heaven and new earth. That will be our best life. But what we are doing right now is in partnership with the Spirit, Jesus is making us into his image. And I love how Eugene Peterson the famous pastor and author and uh, writer of spiritual formation, the way he described discipleship was this, that it is a long obedience in the same direction. When I talk with people who are really serious and hungry about what it means to become more like Jesus, what does it mean to have faith that withstands the test of time? What does it mean to live and have my family reflect the ethics of Jesus and to be someone who is on mission and looks like Jesus? How do you grow spiritually? It's the five things that we're talking about, just practiced over and over and over. The extraordinary Christian life is really just the summation of very ordinary faithful obedience day in, day out. Now, that isn't sexy. It, it, that doesn't you know, cause people to want to book me to come preach in their conferences. But it is how, more often than not, the Spirit works in our lives.